Hello everybody, welcome to a new Let's Play of Let's Play Tales of Exilia. I started this six years ago, and let's just say something happened, and I believe that we don't have any save data of this anymore. And if we do, we don't. Good. Uh, so what happened was, I was going around my PlayStation, and I found out that, oh, I deleted this file by accident. I don't know why, maybe because I bought my computer situation was never going to get fixed, but now that it is fixed, I can do a very long RPG for you guys. For those who don't know about the Tales of games, this is a action RPG genre, but some people think, you know, it's more akin to parts space. That's not entirely the case. There are some parts of this that will turn people on and turn people off. So, before we begin, I'm going to say this right now, I'm never going to dip below normal. I may put myself on high, or hard, or unknown difficulty, but I'm never going to dip below uh, normal. So for those who see this game and go like, oh, this is really enjoyable, it really is. I hope I can tell you guys why, and just why people love these why people love these games um, really much, like so much. I am one of those people who've played the only ones that came to America, and really it's inspired me to go out and find some uh, other copies like the Japanese copy or even some PAL copies of other Tales of games. So let's get this adventure started shall we? This is going to be a very long game and I'm extremely excited and kind on the weird side of uh, helping you guys out on this one. This is probably one of the most easy, uh, easy accessible games to most people. Because this is on the PlayStation Now for the PS4 users, and if you have a PlayStation 3 still, you can still get a physical copy of this, or digital, because the online service isn't closed entirely. So, message speed is going to be that, auto text, sure, subtitles, obviously I want this to be on, because I want you guys to know what's going on. Uh, yes, that's going to be fixed, because I don't want to get lost where I'm going. Axes are going to say normal, autocorrect. Oh, yeah, that's going to stay on that. Um, so for the first little bit, I'm going to put on moderate. Mostly because I just know what I'm doing, and I'm going to just kind of test the waters here and there. Don't expect this to be a perfect run, because I'm definitely not going to expect this to be a perfect run. And then all this could stay on action inputs. Uh, yeah, action inputs are going to be staying the same. Uh, button configuration is going to stay the same. Uh, we're going to turn on music of everything just slightly. Um, and yeah, I believe that's really it. So, I hope you guys are ready for a very long game. And one of my actual favorite games to sit down and play through once in a while. I'm going to let the credits roll, soon, not the, the credits roll, but I'm going to let the intro song playing, uh, to play. But we still got a bit further until we get to that point, if I'm not mistaken. Getting the box ready so I can actually tell you guys some info right off the bat. So when talking about being an RPG genre, you could probably safely assume like, oh, it's going to be like a, a turn-based, right? No, action-based. An action-based game is more of like just quick on your feet, and there are some JRPG elements into this. I would definitely consider this more of a fantasy game, but there are some JRPG elements. Sorry I'm talking over the intro cutscene, it's mostly just because I wanted to tell you guys just a little few details, and then I'm going to shut up for a bit, and then we should be able to go on to our story. So those who are curious, I am a huge fan of the Tales of games. I have... I've never platinumed any of them, but I'm really close to platinuming them. The and Tales of Exilia just happens to be one of the ones that I'm very deeply fond of. Not saying Bisteria and other other series are bad. I just think that Exilia is the one that I think most people should start out with. Even though I'm pretty sure I said the exact same thing about Tales of Graces F. But the thing is with that game, that's more of like if you're super new to action RPG games or action games, period. This is more of if you're used to Tales of um, uh, blah, 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 used to Tales of Graces F so and you want to jump into an actual Tales of game. 
Now, Time some people might say differently. I believe this to be the case. So I want to hear what you guys say in the comments. And please, if there's stuff that I miss or I don't know, uh, feel free to just give me a nudge to the, in the comments. My commentary style may be a bit different for Come. this LP too because I may actually get a guest commentator once in a while for this. A guest commentator that I know actually enjoys this game and she's also going to be a, a bright eyed new Let's Player for all you guys. Dreams for this game, so you guys probably want to hear all this. Such is the life of all who live in Riz and Maxia, where hope springs eternal. The spirits have the power to bring man's wishes to fruition. And in turn, those wishes preserve and protect the spirits lightly. Therefore, it could be said that Maxwell. The Lord of the Spirits is, in fact, the guardian of all things. In this world, no known evil exists that could threaten this harmonious cycle. But if one did, perhaps it might lurk in the hearts of men. Okay, so we just met one of the main Sorry. characters. This game is also very unique in the sense of those two characters you can take control of, both of them having their own storyline, but for the most part, it's all the same. It's very interesting how they do this, and I think it's actually a very good story narrative. So we have Jude Mathis, who is basically a city dweller because, let's be fair, he's in school and he's the medical kid. Or Mele, um, a Mila, Mila. Wow, I said that wrong. So the difference between Jude and Mila before I get into anything, because I want you guys to understand playstyles. Mila is more magic and sword based. So let's say she wants to cast like something like Fireball, she'd be able to do that instantaneously. Or if she wants to do something like Demon Fang, that's a sword move from the Tales of series, she could do that. Jude is a healer, but a fist user, so his ma his magic attacks are going to be all like uh, stat buffing or stat um, or healing. So <clears throat> it's not because I'm a guy. We're actually going to play as Jude. Why we're going to play as Jude is because I think it's more easy to adapt to than Mila. I'll get into more reasons why and why we're doing this later. But for right now, let's, let's start the story as Jude, because this man is awesome. He is definitely one of my favorite Tales of characters. But it's kind of hard to say who's the main canon because, let's be fair, most Tales of games don't really care about the canon. And I don't think that really has to be talked about in this game in particular. Okay? Maybe another game. Must be Maybe you guys know what I'm talking about. Maybe you guys don't. Yeah, but then again, I'm here to explain sure and answer this? questions. Don't you have Unless I deem them spoilers uh, related, then I won't answer them. But don't I will give you guys that. a roundabout. You're in a rush too, aren't Maybe throw you three, three a couple Shoot, holes. Right. I, I'll Thanks find something to get give you guys. Too. So, this is also going to mark my ninth year of Let's Playing. Or pretty damn close to my ninth year. I am really giddy to show you guys what I got and how much I've improved as a Let's Player. And it's just going over your basic controls, which I don't really need. I'm good. Can, can we? Thank you. So, now that we are playing as Jude, this is how the roll map works. On top left of the screen, you get a mini map. Which is extremely helpful if you're going to be doing certain things later in game, mostly you know, farm hunting or doing other things like that. It's really Tiny cool. Me any extra credit with a professor. And there are Let's some. <clears throat> ah, voice crack. I'm sorry. There are some um, tricks and tips you could use that I definitely picked up on my first time playing. But then again, people who know me, I'm very observant as a game player. So. This also goes into topics of why I want to start the Tales of Thon. 
The Tales of Fawn was uh, an idea I had ever since I saw Miss Sayanella do her Let's Play Tales of, uh, Tales of Asperia. Also, cutscenes. I should probably be quiet. I will be quiet for a time bit when there's talking. Like right now. Professor House, are you leaving? Well, look who decided to show up. Um, yeah. Sorry I'm late. Worry not, lad. Now, keep this between us. But I've been asked to help down at the lab. Top secret research, they say. A request right from Orda Palace? Wow! I need you to keep an eye on things until I get back. You can handle it, lad. Only patients with appointments will be coming in today. What? Oh, right. So I going into more of a, credit a backstory. I'm not gonna let this, I'm not gonna let all scenes play out consistently. Um, letting the scene play out. I actually got inspiration because of Masei Nella's uh, Tales of Asperia. And other Tales of games that I happened to be playing around the time. And I actually kind of enjoy the fact that, you know, I was one of the, um, not one of the few people, because someone recommended Masei Nella to me. Because they said, oh, you like Tales of games, how about you watch, like, this person? So I did, and that's why I kind of started watching other Tales of game playthroughs, because... I really do like the story, and I do like to show off every little kind of so uh, cranny I can. There are some things I generally don't know how to show off, just because I am very not skilled to a degree with a lot of them. But I think the Tales of series is definitely a game that, even if I don't show off anything, it'll give you guys inspiration to pick up a game and probably try to see what your playstyle is. My playstyle is more fast and aggressive. For those who have seen me play other RPGs of the genre, or other games, period, you guys will definitely know that I'm more of a actions man, and I don't really think too much about my actions. There are some times where I will straight up think about my actions, and, you know, not act like that. But I think for the Tales of games, it's okay to let out and be a little bit of berserk. So, to explain where we are, we are in the continent of Fenmont, I, I believe. believe I up my or we're in the channeling. capital city of Fenmont. That's and stuff. we oh. are just basically an average college student, I believe, because okay. Jude is. Go. I want to say 19. He's 19, and he's a very it's gifted funny, person with um, the sense of today. healing and uh, mana. Wrong, Mr. Elden? Mana, it's mana, mana, I'm going to say interchangeably. So it's very interesting to see, like, just kind of different lifestyles, too, because this game does something pretty interesting, where it doesn't always take place on a certain town. Each town's different, but they're all in the same continent kind of area. If people have played other Tales of games, like Tales of Symphonia, you guys know, you might know what I mean, or you might not know what I mean. So, for those who are going to be asking, am I going to be covering Tales of Symphonia anytime soon? Actually, no. no more I personally today, think that Tales of Symphonia is the most boring Tales of game I've ever played. I don't sure personally like it, and I'm also did? watching Masei and Ella do her run of it. So, if you guys want to just watch a good Tales of Symphonia run, me. go watch Masei. I know I'm throwing her name out like every time I can, but like, no, it's, it's really true. I do Since like right Masei's Let's Play Zen, style and her... General idea of how let's play should be done. At his disposal, treating ten people isn't any more taxing than treating one. He spent so much time developing. So for those who don't know, ta the Tales of games are very interesting in the way of how you can play them. You can play them solo and have the AI control people, or you can play up to four people and have everyone uh, control an individual character. I think that's bloody amazing, and if they can make that somehow online, well, no, that would be hectic online, because lag and stuff and other things, and it'll be just more of a nightmare. But I think that's such a wonderful idea. Like, let's say you're having a party and you're like, oh, I really want to sit down and actually play this game. Or you're having, like, a get-together and you just don't want to put this game down. You can have your other friends jump in and drop out as soon as they want to. No worries. I'm used to it. I'll be back soon. So, yep. 
And now we gotta go look for Dr. Hughes, because he hasn't shown back up yet. Oh, God. Yeah, Femmon, here we go. So I was right, we are in Femmon. Now, people are probably asking, will this go up in, like, my uh, RPG, it's like Wild Arms 3 does? Um, Wild Arms 3 is a good game, and the Wild Arms series in general, I think, is a fantastic game. But I wouldn't really necessarily call it that. And I wouldn't say every Tales of game is a perfect, like, game. I definitely wouldn't call this a perfect game. But there are some things about this game and series I do enjoy and I do come, I do come back for every time. It's mostly story and other purposes like it. But... We'll get into that with far, uh, far more detail as we go on the story. So right now, which is more of our little tutorial area, and we're trying to like just go find the Fester because yeah. The falling sure are beautiful today. I'll never forget how stunned I was when I arrived at Fenmont and saw the lumen trees for the first time. And there are little talking cutscenes like that in the TLSO games, and I'll try I to stop. I can't believe Professor House won the How Prize. I need you know to what? No, that's not important. News. But yeah, no, there's a lot of text and a lot of, in general, just funny behavior that this game and the series has shown as a whole. So, I can't Sorry. believe I didn't show you guys the yeah, opening cutscene. I'll do that in the next episode, I guess. Pick up Professor House. He's from the Talon Medical I'm gonna give you guys a fair warning that House. these House. videos may go on for about yeah, half an hour or so, just because the Tales of games are fairly long. And I don't believe there's a lot of, like, good stopping points. I should probably explain this in the beginning of the video, but for so those who stuck through 16 minutes of it so far, please note that Didn't these videos may go on just for a bit longer, because sure. this game is definitely a bit of a longer Those's game. Rules. Right. Now what? No way those guys will let me in. Okay, vent's been updated. Okay. Hmm. Sorry, there's not a whole lot to talk about right now. It's just more like we're still getting into the tutorial bits and we're still practically getting past all of them. So, if you want a more consistent gameplay style, I would actually say go play Mila's story first. Mila's story, I believe, begins straight up with this part. And this is the fateful encounter. Do you lost the paper? Gotta go find it. And there's a girl walking on water. That doesn't scream odd and mysterious at all. So we know who this is, but Jude doesn't, obviously, because Slim the Fair of the story hasn't been there. <laughs> And I do kind of wish that this game did something unique that some games have done, where it's like, you had to play through one story and then you play through the other one. But no, this game is definitely more, you can play either or and you'll get the same amount of story and back information that you need for all of them. Uh, hi. So I may be a little more informative, I may be a little more talkative in the sense of me acting as the characters or like thinking as the characters, but I don't think I have to do that for this Wait, game because into the, lab? the quality of talking and voice acting in general is probably more than enough than we need for this, or for my style of commentary. That's strange. What part of Keep Quiet didn't you understand? So, ready to hold your tongue now? How did she see her his nod? Was it just like she was gonna let him go regardless, or that's one thing I actually never got. So much noise. Could you try coughing quietly? What are you doing here anyway? Can I talk? 
I dropped something. I was just picking it up, see? What are you up to? The guards will be here any second. That's why I need to hurry. And you need to go home. Before they arrest you for trespassing. Oh. So this, our hands kind of forced to uh, go into sewers with Mila. But she kind of straight up left us. Where'd she go? She must have gone ahead. There was something fishy about that sign-in sheet, too. Anyway, I need to find the professor and tell him about the award. Wow, dude isn't just a person who takes, um, everything as coincidence. That's very interesting to see a character like him kind of understand things. So now I have to explain a couple things on the minimap. So, that little blue tie over there, I can't zoom in. That little blue tie is basically things that will respawn every time you come into or come and leave in a new area. That treasure chest is obviously a one-time uh, accessible item, but it's usually a uh, good thing to note for people who haven't played the game before. And it does kind of tell you certain things as you're playing more and more of it. So now we get in our cutscene. So many cutscenes in one episode. Hey kid, this game is definitely not going to be all cutscenes. I um, I do apologize uh, for those who kind of just find cutscenes sort of annoying. Myself in. I I want the intrusion. Huh. I should be taking you to security, but you seem courteous enough. Come on, I'll take you to the exit. Wait, I'm looking for Professor House. I think he's still here. Oh, so you know the professor, do you? Yeah, he's still here. You really shouldn't be wandering around here, kid. I ought to get in touch with your parents. My family doesn't live around here. They're all back in my hometown. I see. Good to know. What? Relax. Come quietly and you won't get hurt. Why are you doing this? Wait, does this mean you're holding the professor too? I said come quietly, kid. Okay, now we get to the introduction of battles. This is a really forced battle, but it's really cool. The tutorial is just going to tell you about basic attacks and basic formats. I'll go over this more in detail as we play the game, but for right now, I don't need a tutorial. So X does your standard combo hits like this. So X does your circle, well circle will do like your demon fist or whatever skill you might have equipped at the time. So, dude here, as I said, he's very physically combat oriented. He will never go for long range unless you're using team defense a lot. The sword in the bottom of uh, right side of your attack bar and uh, TB bar is what your action limit is. So our action limit is a total of four right now. And as you can tell, we are not exactly super uh, skilled fighting dogs. <laughs> Or cats, or whatever it says. So, down, up, and left, and right will do different attacks with your standard attacks, and we'll also do different arts. So, that was our up attack, this is our down attack, a sweep, and a like neck snapper, effectively. And same for circle attacks, or art attacks. That will also be contributing towards up, down, left, and right. So, I should also explain how you guard. You guard by holding circle, or circle, it's um, square. Square, and then you uh, could dodge roll, or dodge move, and it's just left or right. Uh, Jude has a special ability if you hit, if you dodge right at the same time that enemy attacks you, you get behind them. It's basically anime equivalent of a flash step for those who watch, like, um, Bleach or anything else. So, white symbols are little bags that respawn every time you come into a new area. So, the ones you want to be looking for are definitely the white and black, uh, the white and um, blue uh, ties. Because those generally have at least some maturity you could use for a lot of great things in, later in the game. And even, you can find some money in those bags randomly sometimes too, which makes life a little better. Oh, I'm good. 
Also, this game also has free run automatically unlocked to you. There are some games you have to unlock free run on, but this game is definitely not one of them. So as you can probably tell, I also play a bit too cautiously sometimes, but that's also we're playing on like moderate mode, which is basically a equivalent of like not hard mode, but it's the next, uh, it's a lower step from hard mode. So it's going to be a little tougher, but in return we get more EXP and more uh, gald. Gal's your money. And for someone who's played this game enough, I believe I don't really need to play it on normal. We'll see how it plays out because there's definitely some parts of this game where I think I'm going to have to bump it down to normal. So, now we get into our actual first mini dungeon. This is definitely not the first dungeon, but it's the first mini dungeon. This, I believe, is the Fenmont Research Facility. So, fun fact. All these areas are going to be locked to you. There's only one sense. area you really have to go What's after, going but there's going to be items littered about every dungeon or sub-dungeon you go to. So just for the sake of collect uh, collectathons effectively too, I'm going to go out of my way and find all the all the freaking um, treasures and like other miscellaneous stuff just so people don't like think I'm going to just go from destroy point to destroy point. I do want to show this game's like character and personality a bit. Oh, let's see your double back. I'm not your single back. Gotta remember the Spicer double. That's really a weird thing you used to. But as you can tell, as you guard, you take less damage than you were to take a full front, so there are a lot of benefits of guarding. This treasure has orange gels. I'm going to try to avoid using gels just because. And there's a couple reasons. One of them, probably being the most famous reason, is if you don't use gels throughout a certain amount, a certain time throughout the game, you will actually get a certain skit. And what are skits? We'll go over that in greater detail later. Oh, I mean, the hard button. Okay. So whenever you get that little like swing down in this game, your action goes up once per battle. Or twice, depending on how you do it. Critical hits are basically what is your AC, so you can do more action in the battle. They're basically... Consider them more like action points, opposed to AC, or whatever they call them. And was that really it for the main floor? That was really it for the main floor. Wow, that was kind of pitiful. So, moving up, let's get the treasure chest. It's apple gels! Yay, apple gels to your recovery items, to your HP recovery items. Orange gels are your TP re uh, recovery items, but I'm going to try once again to not use them as frequently as I used to. Okay, come on. I went right into that. I am smart. Also, you have a higher chance of getting a critical hit when you're behind the enemy. That's why I'm also trying to do like the quick step as I explained to you. Okay, so... Oh, hello, save ring. I didn't really need you. I... So yeah, it's like right before the attack will hit you. That's really the best time to go for it. Uh, do I really want to... You know, I do want to save because I want to... I want to also show off like the saving screen. That pick, that color will actually be different depending on who you play. It's blue for Jude, and it's uh, pink, purplish for um, uh, Mila. So the characters do have their own theming. It's really interesting in my opinion. And also, what the hell just happened there? Some chick just walked right through that. But, with that, I'm going to have to call it an episode. I am so sorry, guys. But I think that's going to do it for the first episode of Let's Play Tales of, uh, Tales of Exilia.